Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSR HealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSR HealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. This is a place of inspiration, education, and hope for a more compassionate and sustainable world. I offer this show to you freely. However, your support and donations really matter. To make a donation or to learn more about sponsorship and advertising opportunities, visit my website at TeresaNicasio.com, and that's Teresa with an H and Nicasio with an N and two S's, T-H-E-R-E-S-A-N-I-C-A-S-S-I-O.com. Be sure to join us next week when the phone lines will finally be open. They were going to be open today, guys. Sorry, things just happen, um, but this is the way it is as it is right now. And um, we're going to be having, though, next week, the lawyer-turned-internationally-recognized celiac blogger, Jules Shepard, love her. Um, she's going to be with us talking about how celiac disease changed her life. It's going to be a great show. You won't want to miss it. And also you might recall from last week that we today's show we were going to be joined by Dr. Jessica Renfer. Um, Dr. Jessica uh, will now be with us on a later show, but I am super excited <coughs> excuse me, about the guests that we have for you today. In fact, I was telling the first one that I'm already levitating thinking about the show. Anyway, we have two really special women uh, who are going to take us to new heights. Um, and in particular, this first one is going to take us literally to new heights, uh, six stories perhaps. Um, anyway, they're both revolutionaries, and they're changing the landscapes of our inner and outer worlds, each kind of in their own way. So I'd like to share with you first a little bit about our first guest as an introduction. Her name is Eola Baker, and Eola is a West Coast Canadian artist. She's a TEDx speaker and a visionary of joy who brought joy to the urban alleys of one of Canada's poorest neighborhoods with her Jump for Joy photo project. For the past four years, Eola has taken hundreds of photos of people literally jumping for joy. It's the coolest concept. She's going to talk with us about it. But after 9-11, Eola discovered through her own experience how powerful images are, as I think many of us have, and also how prominent negative fear-based media attention affects the spirit. Her vision and intentional decision to serve by countering the negative by using positive images to uplift the energy of joy, is inviting us to rethink the way we landscape our world. Her photos and the process of creating the images showcase creativity, positivity, joy, and fun that uplifts both participants and viewers alike. Yola, thank you so much for coming. I am really, really happy to share you and and for the um, for the listeners out there, for you to be able to be touched by Eola's spirit. So welcome to the show. Thank you very much. That was a beautiful introduction. <laughs> it's it's all true. I mean, I, I just Eola and I spent quite a bit of time on the phone. We just got going, and I'm like, God, it's there's just so much we could talk about. So we'll we'll cover what we can today, Eola. But um, you know, would you be willing to share with the with the listeners now a little bit about? your journey and um yeah it was 9-11 i think was a was a pretty big turning point for you but there was other things too we wanted to share a little bit about what you've been through and what led you to this amazing project well it's interesting because i think the 9-11 images definitely affected a lot of people including me but at that time um i don't think that i was um realizing the depth and the power that the images had on me in such a negative way mm-hmm. um, um i think the reason that those ones affected me for so strong was because it was just a continuous um repetition of the 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 images and i just couldn't stop feeling it until i 
just literally stop looking at the images. And then my project came along quite literally a good 10 years later. So mm -hmm. they're, they're actually not connected except for the fact that it, it really stuck with me, the, the power that the images had on me emotionally, on other people emotionally. Yeah, it's like a so, seed. It was um, like a seed in your life, huh? It was a seed, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until I kind of hit another kind of rough patch in my own personal life that I, I, I literally sat down one day and I just thought, oh, you know, I'm not happy in my life. I'm not happy with what I'm doing. I'm feeling disconnected. And it just reminded me of those feelings, and I think that's where it came from. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just decided to put together an intentional list of everything that I wanted in my, my life and everything I wanted to feel that I wasn't feeling and, and to basically bring life to that seed, that, that positive energy that I was longing for and was not feeling. So I, I made a massive list together, and that included photography, which was one of my favorite things, mm, uh, nice. creative, in, um, interacting with people, playing, um, and just really what I wanted to feel was joy. So I thought, well, I'm going to create this joy for myself. And I just kind of was like, I'm going to make every, all of this list into a project that my whole focus is going to be on creating this feeling and sharing it with other people because obviously sharing that energy, you know, like it's so cliche, but it actually does double it. It makes it feel better. Yeah, you know, so, and I, I actually wonder it might do uh, more exponentially than doubling. I, I think it's um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it almost it changes the whole paradigm of how we feel. You know, as a psychologist, it's like you know, this, because sometimes you can add things, but there's something about actually shifting, you know, changing the whole game. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like let's, let's stop playing the same game. Let's let's play. Let's go another place on the playground and play. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I know that's a very technical thing to say, doubled. But what I mean is that I knew it was multiplying. Yeah, no, and when no, I started I know out with the project, yeah. I didn't, I didn't actually. I had all these ideas and these intentions, but I, you know, it's one thing to think oh, I'm going to do this thing, and then to actually start doing it and have it create the feelings that you thought it might, and to to have all these beautiful magical things spur off of it that I wasn't even, you know, planning to happen. Yeah, lots of <laughs> just time, because isn't it? it it kind of got on a roll like a big snowball effect of joy and positive energy and people just really gravitated towards it and really supported it and me yeah. and um, I mean a lot of it came from the whole idea of watching these negative images that were always around me and feeling like god you know like if, if you think just as a society like how is this energy that we're feeling all the time we go out into the world we interact with fear we're more closed off we're more shut down you know it, it's such a hard energy. And then I thought, mm -hmm. well, if I were able, able to create all these photos on a mass scale, how would that counteract it? Like, what, is, what are the things, the characteristics that joy create in people? Mm -hmm. It opens your heart. It makes you kinder. It makes you lighter. It makes you want to help each other and support each other. So I thought, I'm just going to mass create positive images <laughs> yeah no, I, I just think that's amazing and and you know i love watching your your um your ted talk which you may have noticed i put on your profile page so people can really enjoy oh that's it so nice Thank easily you. too um <clears throat> and i've watched it a few times because i just feel so happy watching you and and listening to your the wisdom that has come through but one of my favorite parts of this and and maybe because it just resonates with what i've found to be so true in life is that some of the best things that happen happen um, unintentionally? So you have this you had this this vision board kind of thing. You had this intentional list of what you wanted, and it was an it was an essence that you were seeking, and you were thinking about the specifics. But how it how it actually evolved, uh, I thought was was such a neat story because you just were traveling around the world after like a bad relationship, or it really took you down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then, um, yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. kind of one of those scenarios where um, I guess I just kind of got to a point in my life where everything just didn't feel like it was working out and everything felt like the world was against me and I just was in a depression and felt c completely just disconnected. Like, how did I get here? You know, like, mm -hmm. what was me? Yeah, yeah, and, what the heck? <laughs> um, so I just decided to make a really drastic change and I literally sold everything I owned. Wow. I had, I think, a two suitcases or something. And um, at the time, I, I co-owned a business with a friend. 
Um, so I just basically moved out after my end of my relationship and sold my car, sold my share of the business. I just took off, and I was like, I am going to change this. I am going to figure out, you know, a way to feel better, and that's sort of what spurred the whole thing. Kind of a leap of faith, um, literally, when you did all those things, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, and it wasn't easy. I was definitely struggling and doing a lot of soul searching, and um, the first little while was fine, and I could relax and, you know, try different things and take different different courses and take, do introspection. And then it wasn't literally until I ran out of money that I decided, oh, I'm going to do an international photo project. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, but I didn't want to, like at that point, I was so sure that I needed to do this that I didn't let it stop me. Yes. I mean, and I don't know, something just clicked. It was, you know, when you, I guess it was almost like my soul was like, yes this is it, this is what you need to do. Mm-hmm. And regardless of everything that wasn't quite ready for me to go forward, I just did anyway. And actually, I literally sprained my ankle the first week I decided to do it and wasn't able to do any of the shoots. But it forced me to sit in my bed and learn how to make a blog and learn how to you know, edit photos and learn how to do all the things that I hadn't really figured out yet. <laughs> Wow. So all these negative situations turned into positives um, because I was learning how to see things that way and how to approach life that way. Yes. Well, and this is, you know, it was almost like a self-therapy process, it sounds like. You were depressed, mm-hmm. and, and um, but in order to make, we don't like to make changes, especially significant changes, but once you make that decision and you go to that place of the, you know, the unknown, um, magic can really happen. So oh, I, I, I can't I, tell I, you the I, magic. Pardon? I, I can't even begin to tell you the amount of magic that's happened with this project. Yeah? It's, yeah, it's, it's astonished me, actually. We'll, we'll so, you know, talk a little bit about that. That's so um, Well, I guess when you start a project basically with nothing, basically not knowing how on earth you're going to make it happen, but just riding base, you know, with that faith and knowing that, it's like a knowing and understanding um, that somehow it's all going to work out. Mm-hmm. Um, I had given myself a couple of benchmark goals that I haven't hit yet, but it doesn't matter because better things have come up. Mm-hmm. And initially it was really a lot more about the jumping images and the photos, which I still love. But along the way, I suddenly had someone offer to let me put the, the photos up on the side of a building, which which meant I suddenly became a muralist, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, like Mm -hmm. all these. And then that whole process was amazing because I didn't have a clue what I was doing, Mm -hmm. but everything I needed appeared always when I needed it in whatever, not always the format I might have imagined it would be in, but it was there. Um, People showed up. Um, I was in this, like you mentioned earlier, it was one of, it's one of the poorest neighborhoods in Canada, Mm -hmm. a lot of drug addiction, homelessness, people are down and out and really, you know, struggling with hunger. And um, they were my biggest fans, and they were the ones that were there hanging out and helping me learn how to drive the lift and checking in on me. And it just wow. really opened my heart because I thought, God, these people have nothing. But they're so inspired by the message of my project that they just want to be there and they want to take part and they want to help me. And it just I don't know. It was magical. It was really magical. Yeah, well, there's something to be said for that, huh? The, you know, the, how the generosity and 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 it's and that's part of what what moved me with with your story so much, Iola. Is is uh, so there's there's your story which led you, you know, kind of to this creative project. But then there was almost like a soul. It's like a spiritual journey, uh, you know, of finding and creating joy in what would be thought of as some of the most unlikely places. Now, the, mm-hmm. the, you know, the poorest part of Vancouver, you know, the, one of the biggest cities in Canada, one of the poorest cities, and like you're saying, where there's hunger, there's, there's drug addiction, there's, there's the homelessness, there's, there's a lot of sadness. And, mm-hmm. yeah, and by your decision to bring your light, your, your joy, your, your image or, or um, mind of possibilities, you actually transformed not just the, the physical landscape by, by being two different murals you ended up doing. You know, one was three stories mm-hmm. tall, one was six stories tall, massive murals. Uh, you know, with each image six foot 
by six foot. It's an incredible project. Um, you not only changed that, that, but you also changed the whole spirit in the in the community. Yeah, and, and, and you know, it really is humbling to to say that. But the response I had from people in the neighborhood, um, it it was just so humbling and so wonderful to have them walk by and see their responses and see them light up. And in the first mural, I had done the photos all around Vancouver. And I, it was completely by chance that I ended up in the downtown east side. I, I didn't mm. go there thinking, oh, I'm going to change these people's lives. I literally just happened to meet a woman who owned a building there, and it just happened that it happened there. Right. But um, so I had these people draw, you know, come by and visit me and respond and, like, get really excited about the photos. And so many of them would say, oh, I want to be in it. And they were the least likely people you'd imagine <laughs> that would want to do Jump for Joy photos. Yeah, what were, what, so, were some, what, were, what makes you say that they were some of the least likely people you'd well, expect? Well, because they are the people that you see on the streets asking for money or shooting up heroin, mm -hmm. or they're the people that I used to walk by and feel pity for, and now I feel a really joyful connection that I see them and I'm like, hey, how are you doing? And I, I approach them from such a different place. And so it enables a different kind of connection and interaction with people that I'm capable of before. Well, yeah, because shivers. because of the way I was viewing them, I was viewing them from a place of sadness myself. Yes, that disconnection comes in so many forms, doesn't it, Diola? Yeah, and yeah. then so when the first mural came down, I was really <laughs> determined to make another one because it it made me sad for them to not have it there anymore. Oh, oh, just, just and explain explain to the listeners. So, so Iola put all this work in and put the, constructed this mural with all these photos that she had put together with a special glue and everything on this entire. It was three stories and was how how long was it? It, it was uh, 32 feet high by 120 feet wide. The first one. So she did this massive um, work of art, guys, and then she she discovered how how did you discover that it was being taken down? What happened? Well. First of all, I should point out that it's a pay step, which means it's, um, it wouldn't have been permanent anyway, but I did expect it to stay up a lot longer. Um, it, but what did I you say it was? It was a what? Pay step. It's a type of, a lot of the street artists that you see posters up outside, they use it like a special wheat paste. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Gotcha. Yeah. So it wasn't a painted mural and people, yeah, I should make that distinct, distinction. But um, I didn't know that it had been, was going to be removed, and I happened to be literally passing by on a bus going to something that passed by the mural and saw them um, spraying it down with water pressure. No. And my heart. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this. And I got off the bus even though I was going somewhere else, and I went and looked at the wall, and I was just like, the first thing that went through my mind is, like, it's not my mural. It belongs to all of these people. Right. You know, there's hundreds of people who, who took part in it, who jumped for joy in it, who are sharing their energy. And then they've had meaning for. Yeah, and then the people in the street, they walk by and take images of it, jumping, or, you know, it wasn't just the people in the alley. There were tourists that went there. there were, it was, like, this beautiful place for people to share joy. Yes. And so when I saw it come down, I was like, oh, man. And I, and I just had this that same feeling of, like, I've got to make another one. Even I though, again, that. still totally broke, still not knowing what I'm doing. I literally walked around for the three days later. After feeling, quite honestly, I was quite upset about it. I was pretty sad to see it come down. And, but I thought, I'm going to make another one. So I walked around the city, and then I found my second wall, which was twice the height. Wow. And I was like, that's the wall. That's the one I'm going to do. Even bigger, and, uh, even bigger. Wow. <laughs> More joy, even bigger. So I And I had, again, not really knowing what I was doing. I just walked into the building, and I was like, who owns this building? I want to make a mural on the wall. Like, I must have sounded like a crazy person. Like, I'm going to take pictures of people jumping. Yeah. Put them on the wall. So I want to bring joy, to this. I want to bring joy to this wall and the, everybody yeah, around so I got really lucky and found out that the building was owned or managed by Akira Women's Resource Society, which is um, they shelter abused women and children. Oh, wow. And they have low-income housing, so and they're a nonprofit, so they partnered with me to be able to help me raise the funds. And within, you know, three days of my first one coming down, I was already on to the second one. <laughs> and wow. this time I was really 
really dedicated to having people that I'd met on the street or, you know, people in the neighborhood involved. Yes. So I would literally go up to someone who, you know, had no teeth and, you know, shooting up marks on their arms and greasy, hadn't washed, and I'd say, hey, you want to do a jumping picture? And they would. That's and it just, so great. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll we'll go on to the chapter two of this after the break. We're going to have to take a little break, folks. But okay. stick around. We're going to hear more from Yola in just a few moments after some words from our sponsors. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five six four six three. For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to earthchannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, earthchannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now this same technology is available to you. They have the best earthcast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live EarthCast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. Call earthchannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. Yumfoodforliving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit yumfoodforliving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit yumfoodforliving.com. Yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. If you like to spend your television viewing time learning about some of the things that you may have missed in history class, or if history was your favorite subject, then you should check out the link to the History Channel on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page. Order DVD sets by series or by subject matter right from our homepage while you still enjoy your favorite HealthyLife.net show. You're listening to HealthyLife.net, the radio network that brings positive talk with positive change to make your world a little better. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. For those of you who are just joining us, we have been talking with alchemist, creator, adventure. I'm going to want you to talk a little bit more about those things in a moment, Eola, um, and artist, uh, Eola Baker. Before the break, Eola, you were talking about your, your Jumping for Joy project and, um, and how you went into the one of Canada's poorest neighborhoods and through your open-heartedness and um, your, your creative spirit and, and open heart of joy that you had people jumping for joy and you took photos and you put them on and you made these massive murals that were like six stories high and very, very long. And it really changed the whole uh, landscape for the people who lived there um, inside their hearts as well as in the world that they were living in, um, beautifying it and bringing joy. Um, I was wondering a couple things, Eola. One is, Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could talk with the um, listeners here and share a little bit more about what you discovered about the human spirit. You touched upon it before the break and how the way you viewed people changed. 
how the way you viewed people who were very poor and on the streets uh, change. Would you be, would you mind sharing a little bit about that inner transformation for you? Yeah, I would love to because um, I think that that is one of the side effects of joy. Actually, that um, the entire way that I now view the world is very different than um, when I was coming from a sad or fearful place. Um, and, and what I feel happens is now that when I approach people, I'm approaching people from a, a new vantage point. I'm, I'm, I'm approaching them with a full, joyful heart instead of feeling closed off or untrusting. Or all, It's all energy. So whatever mm. you're putting out to someone, they're picking up. Mm-hmm. And vice versa. So, you know, sometimes you meet someone and you have like an instant like, oh, I don't know about that person. Or you have an instant, wow, I love that person. And mm-hmm. I think it's all that, the way that they're exchanging energy with you. Mm-hmm. So for me, when I, when I began to really let the joy settle into myself and to really feel the joy, um, I've noticed now the way I interact with people is very different and their response to me is very different too. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's it's almost like just that decision to love, that decision to be kind, that decision to be joyful. Yeah, is itself it, transformative. It absolutely was for me, and I've seen it in other people as well. Um, and I think it's an ongoing thing. And it was it was definitely a decision that I made and that I practiced. And you know, when I was not feeling that great, I would literally just every day I was posting my joyful photos and coming back to trying to stay positive. I mean, it's almost like a muscle that you practice, you know? Yeah, you train yourself yeah, into exactly. it. Exactly. And it is, it is like a discipline practice that, mm-hmm. uh, it, you know, as a psychologist, sometimes people will be like, oh, there's so many dark things, bad things in the world. And, and the reality is there are. But the other part of the reality is there's so much joy or potential for joy. There's so much beauty. There's so much wonderment. There's so much of life that's also to be had. Mm -hmm. And so basically the reality is, you know, we we can only we only have so much energy. We can only focus on so many things at a time. And on a practical level, why not shift our focus to more of the things that make us feel good and make each other feel good than the things that make us feel like crap? Absolutely. Yeah. And the the bad things are going to always be there. Yeah. And how you allow them to shape your life is also a choice. I mean, you can choose to get swallowed up in it, to wallow in it. I've, I've done it before. <laughs> I get mm-hmm. it. But um, after training myself into choosing more positive thoughts, choosing to focus on joy, choosing to um, make it a priority in my life, all of those negative things still happen, but they don't knock me out like they used to. They don't take me out of the, you know, they don't make me shut down. They don't make me feel hopeless because I have a new way of feeling that includes joy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So given, yeah. given this experience, uh, if you were going to give a takeaway to our listeners um, about what they could do, what, what, how they might be able to use what you've learned in life, how they might be able to um, take something from this conversation and um, well, shift their life. Yeah, there's a couple. Well, first of all, that joy is a choice, mm-hmm. and you just need to make that decision to feel it and work towards it. And just through your thoughts and actions that you just, you know, every day, maybe you don't feel joyful the whole day, but look for the things that bring you joy and focus more on those things. It's like those little things every day. Um, And then there's another thing that um, I spoke about earlier is about joy being multiplied. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a contagious energy, just the same way fear is. So the ripple effects of you changing the way you feel is going to ripple out to other people, and it's going to ripple back to you. So it's, you know, it's worth it. (laughs) Oh, I love that. And even just that, just that, almost like a mantra that joy is contagious, and mm-hmm. um, and you know, related to the media and how we have so many things that are not joy filled, it's um, you know the more we can counter it. And one of the things I'm going to be, ta- I'm going to be ta- talking at the end of today, and the, the because you asked segment, I'm going to be talking about. Um, feeling more joy and um, and how it's like lemonade, right? So uh, because it's really because things can be really sour, but they don't. We have a choice to leave it be sour or to sweeten it. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. 
And so um, the other thing, uh, just you have this amazing project, Eola, and I'm sure there's going to be. Uh, this is. I, I'm hoping this is just a starting point. That it's going to be a bit of a of a mushrooming that maybe start to go either across Canada or, or other places yeah. in the world. Um, what's, what's your website, Eola, that, that people can refer to? Well, I have jumpforjoyphotoproject.com. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been really doing the social media thing quite a bit, so I have. Pretty much anywhere you look for Jump for Joy Photo Project, you're going to find me. <laughs> Jump for Joy Photo Project. Okay, great. Yeah, and and I have I have some of your links as well as with all the guests. I have a profile page of um, if you want if people it's it can be hard to remember everybody's name when you listen, especially if you're driving in your car or something right now uh, yeah. when you're listening to the show. But the um, but on the website the TeresaNicasio.com website, if you look under the radio guests and you just go on to Eola's page, you can get all this information. You can watch her TED talk, and she's really beautiful to watch. So, Eola, I want to thank you for coming um, coming to the show. This is really a treat, um, and we're going to be having to to shift gears, and we're going to go to a station break in a moment. Um, but first of all, thank you. Um, thank you. It's been such a pleasure. I feel like that was three seconds, and I could have talked to you for an hour. <laughs> we totally could have, and, and we may have to have you come back. I just have to say, so keep me posted on what's happening on your path. So after the break, folks, we have a speech and language therapist turned blogger and urban garden revolutionary. I love this. Anyway, Jane Gruber is going to be uh, joining us today and talking about projects that you wouldn't have imagined around front guard, kind of front yard farming. So stay with us and don't go away. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's Yum! foodforliving.com. What does HealthyLife.net and Amazon.com have in common? Well, they're both available on the Internet. They both give great value. But most important, most of our positive program hosts and guests are accomplished authors. And their books are available from, you got it, Amazon.com. Now it even gets better than that. Because when you're listening on air to a HealthyLife.net host or guest, you can go directly to Amazon.com and you can order your book while you're still listening to your favorite HealthyLife.net program. So when you hear an author you like, go to the homepage of HealthyLife.net and click on Amazon.com. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore or substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five sixty four sixty three. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit yumfoodforliving.com. Yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show, where we celebrate everyday heroes, and we work together to help make the world a better place. 
And I'm telling you, speaking of heroes, our next guest, Jane Gruber, is uh, kind of taking the needs of the planet very seriously and helping others uh, do do the same. And she's going to be helping you to be doing more of the same. You're going to be very excited to hear about her. I'd like to give it a, an introduction uh, with regard to some of the things. Jane is amazing. She's doing a lot of things. So Jane Gruber loves all things sustainable, local, and organic, a nature enthusiast, gardener, photographer, writer, and hiker. Her passion lies in connecting and reconnecting people with the power of nature and Mother Earth. She shares the things that she's passionate about regularly on her blog, Recipes of My Home, and in the new year she is embarking on an urban front yard farm project. Anyway, she has all kinds of amusing projects and plant-based recipes on her, on her blog, janegruber.com. Anyway, she, Jane, I'm going to um, jump right in because we have lots we want to cover today. Uh, I will mention that she also, um, you've also done a little bit with just starting with a little bit of filmmaking. So plant that seed, folks. She's, uh, she does great photography and is doing beautiful work on that front as well. But, Jane, welcome to the show. I'm so happy you came to talk with us about urban gardening. Thank you so much, Teresa. It's a pleasure to be here. So um, one of the things happened, so Jane and I were, we met actually at a, at a show I was at once, and um, and the times we were doing things, and then she actually interviewed, you interviewed me, Jane, um, uh, about Yum and the, kind of the, the initiatives I'm doing, initiatives about a year ago, I think. But there's, Jane has so much wisdom. This is just going to be a starting point today because I'm going to be having Jane come back and uh, share more of her, of her wisdom and insights. But, Jane, just the last time we were on the phone, um, we, we started just blabbing on about some of these great projects that are going on in the world about urban um, kind of uh, unusual gardening practices that I love that are very revolutionary. And also you mentioned about your own front yard farm project that you're going to be starting in the new year. So I'd like, I'd, maybe we could start with that. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, what really draws me to urban agriculture and, and inspires me are these amazing people who have started these projects around the world. And really they use their skills and their insights and their techniques and, and various principles to create a world that we want, um, you know, which is one with a vibrant ecosystem and a culture of health. And so this really drives me and inspires me. To, to want to do the same, and, and I hope that this sort of plants the seed um, for other people to, to do the same. And so, so to speak, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no pun intended. And I want to sort of share today my top three favorite projects that I've been reading about and writing about on my blog. And um, the first one, really, that, I, that is sort of the most exciting to me is called the Food is Free Movement. And, um, what is it called? Really the Food is Free Movement? Correct. It's the Food is Free Movement. And And, and if you could speak a little louder, that would be great, Jane. Yeah. It's the Food is Free Movement. And basically, this is a project that was started in January 2012 and uh, by by someone in their front yard. They just just started growing a garden. And within three months, um, their neighborhood followed suit. And now, basically, they have over... uh, They are in 300 cities around the world. There are all kinds of different projects uh, regarding um, Food is Free. And, um, you know, so basically what they're doing is they're encouraging people to grow free food and to grow their community in their front yard. And, while, you know, they're helping people gain independence from what they essentially call a broken agricultural system. But, um, and so they've, they've really done a lot of work around the stuff. There's um, food is free. You know, they're in Texas, in Australia, in New Zealand. And one of the amazing things that they have on their website is a guide for people to start their own food is free project as well. Wow, that sounds amazing. So when you say food is free project, um, people are growing. Is this in their front yards, or how, do, how does this work? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So they, they go, and people are volunteers, volunteer groups, families, um, anybody in the community. They get together, and they go and help someone with their, you know, develop a, a garden in their front yard, and then they share that harvest, and that harvest is available to anyone who, you know, either wants or needs, you know, nutritionally dense food and um, and healthy fresh food that's so beautiful that is mm-hmm. so great and then do people then just kind of go and, and harvest the food themselves or do they have a kind of a way of, of collecting the food and dispersing it or how, how does that work right they I, my, my sense is that they collect the food and um, and then they disperse it according to need or whoever asks for it in the wow. community 
Well, you weren't able to hear the previous guest, but we had someone who um, has been doing some murals in the uh, in the uh, poorest in Vancouver East Side in this case, uh, kind of a very poor community, and really changing the whole feeling and. Um, uh, this, this, this quality of abundance, and she's talking about joy, and we can talk about the abundance of joy, and here we can talk about food security and the abundance of food that we have a choice to be a part of co-creating, and that sounds like an amazing project. Yeah. So, so you said there were three projects. What, what's another one of the projects that you've been following and writing about? So, yeah, another one that I'm really excited about is it comes from Queensland, Australia, and it really is um, what they call now an urban food street. And so this is something that started in 2009. So a wife and husband were sort of lamenting the, the high price of or the high cost of lime. <clears throat> Pardon me. And, um, high, high cost well, of lime? Limes. That's mm -hmm. right, limes. And um, they thought, well, why don't we plant our own tree? And so, so they did. And so that was way back in 2009. Um, and they just started that on their own street. And now, basically, in 2016, they have 11 streets in their neighborhood involved in, in this, you know, urban food street. And they use verges and footpaths to grow food. They grow herbs. They grow veggies. They have fruit trees. And, um, you know, and everyone in the neighborhood contributes in whatever way they can, whether it's labor or skills or a hose to water the trees. And in 2015, I mean, this is amazing, the neighborhood harvested 900 kilograms of bananas no and 300 way. cabbages. Oh, my God. In that that's incredible. So, that's so awesome. Yeah. And so how empowering that is, right? Yeah, What's, that's, we, that's, we don't have tons of time. So let's just skip to the third one. Yeah, absolutely. And the third one that I really find inspiring is, is this gentleman called named Chris Castro. He's from Florida, and he has a, a nonprofit organization. He started it called Fleet Farming, and basically his motto, his mantra is, grow foods, not lawns. And so what he does, him and a, a group of volunteers, they basically go out and they transform these luscious, lovely green lawns that they have in Florida into, you know, urban gardens that, where the food is shared among whoever needs it, whoever wants it. And um, that food is available there because, you know, he says that 33% of climate change, um, wow. you know, can be attributed to, to the food production system. And so he's out to kind of change that. Oh, that's that fantastic. Is. That is really wonderful. Well, you know, the time is flying. So I want to do, what, what's your uh, website again, Jane? So JaneGruber.com. That's G-R-U-E-B-E-R.com, JaneGruber.com. And, again, Correct. her website is right on her Profile page on the Dr. on the Teresa Nicasio .com, um, site. Be sure to check it out. And on there, she also has on her website a free book. And what's the book called? It is called Top Five Desserts. Top Five Desserts, and it's free. It's a free PDF, easy peasy to get down. And we really have to go. But Jane, thank you for coming to the show. We need to go for a break. And after the break, I'll be answering your questions with the because you asked. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604-445 Four four five six four six three. If you're like the 8 out of 10 women that say finding genes that fit is a problem, well, your problem is solved. Lee Genes has done extensive research, and they have genes that fit. There's even an online Lee Fit Finder so you can find the right fit for you. Imagine jeans that instantly slim you with a custom fit and no gap waistband. And guys, kids, Lee has jeans for you, too. Click through to Lee's Jeans on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page and get what fits. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 
604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com or visit YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net. Welcome back. You're listening to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show, where we celebrate life, love, and kindness uh, while also acknowledging the challenges that are part of living. And so now is the part of the show where I answer your questions, you know, whatever your questions are. They can be about psychology, health, parenting, relationships, gardening, pet, uh, pets, cooking, whatever. It can be about um, and during days that it's a live show. You actually can even potentially call in. That could be a called in questions as well. Anyway, during any time of the show. Anyway, to send in your questions, just click on the Ask Teresa button on my website, TeresaNicasio.com. That's Teresa with an H, T-H-E-R-E-S-A, Nicasio with an N, as in Nancy, I-C-A-S-S, like Sam, I-O is an octopus.com. Or you can email me your questions directly at Teresa at TeresaNicasio.com. And for today's Because You Asked section, segment, I thought I would do it a little differently. This is a kind of fun. I had something really special happen this week, and I wanted to share it with you. And the question is, re- is relevant to it because it came out of it. So what happened was I was contacted, apparently a vice principal of a, of a very large school in India uh, heard about me or learned about me. And this school has like 900 students or something. But they, he wanted me to come and speak with the students, uh, the high school aged 14 to 17 year old students. And they wanted me to do this by Skype. And so I said okay, and I did that this past this past week. Um, but you know, in terms of deciding about what to talk about, because I wanted it to be relevant to them for their age, their culture, you know, their, what what they wanted. And this this is a community of young people who have at least in the ones who were able to, to make it to the I think it was about twenty or thirty students were there. Um, None of them had ever even met a psychologist, let alone spoken with one or spoken uh, or had the opportunity to to get therapy from. So I thought this was an amazing opportunity to speak to them and give them an opportunity to have some support in ways that maybe they never would or have and never would in their lifetime otherwise get. So. So instead of me deciding on a talk, I asked them to submit questions, and but they, the questions needed to be submitted anonymously because I wanted them to be able to really ask in a way that felt safe. All that said, I got this long list of I think 20 or so questions, 20 plus questions that were incredible. I could not believe the questions that came up. Um, but also what happened was during the talk itself, I thought I was going to answer just those questions so it would be all anonymous. But what happened was during the um, during the conference, uh, the students themselves wanted to. They actually asked in person directly and were courageous in doing that. I was so impressed. So anyway, all that said and done, the question I'm going to I, I wanted to respond to today was related to something that I know many of you struggle with, and has a universality. But they also I love that it has this story of relevance that goes around the world. And the question that this one student asked me was, how do I stop thinking about things that bother me negatively? How do I stop thinking about things that bother me negatively? There were a few questions around this sort of theme, you know, whether it's like kind of depressive thoughts or um, you know, ruminations. And so I thought this would be a really wonderful uh, question to to introduce because it touches upon a lot of things. 
one of the things it touches upon that is related to our first uh, guest today around the Joy Project, the Jump for Joy Project, is the idea that our world is full of negativity, a lot of negative images, a lot of negative thoughts, um, a lot of negative reactions to things. Um, there's been some research, which I, I personally am not sure about, how they can actually do this research. And so it's a bit controversial about the actual numbers. But um, it's, you know, they say that there, we may have like about somewhere in the, in the realm of 40 to 80,000 thoughts a day. Um, actually, uh, at least, let me see here, I think it's at least 60 to 70,000 per day that are supposedly we have, and at least 40,000 of those thoughts we have per day are negative. So with this barrage of, of negative thoughts, again, some, some people are nickel and diming about this. Well, is it really 80,000 thoughts a day or is it 40,000 or 50,000? And I'm thinking, you know, I, either way, those are, that's a lot of negative thoughts that we have. And not only that, but what they found is probably about 95% of those thoughts are repetitive. So we get to have the same negative thoughts each day. Um, so there's a bit of a of an issue with creativity here. We you know, we, we have a crisis of creativity of, of lacking um, more positive thoughts. And so what I shared with the students, and there's a lot of things we could talk about this with regard to thoughts, but a couple of things. One is um, the focus on negative thoughts are not, when we're truly in the present moment experiencing uh, from a sensual, mindful place, those thought, it's actually a thought-free zone because as we are receiving the sensual experiences, we can't have thoughts that are judging uh, about the, the experiences. We're not in the past and we're not in the future. Because when our thoughts are resided in, reside in the past, that's when we get in the trap of rumination and there's going to be a lot of depression that comes out of, I wonder what would have happened if I did this or didn't do that. And when we're not in the present, when we're in the future, that is the, that is the fuel for anxiety. Oh, my gosh, what ifs, you know, the, the deadly what ifs, uh, which create a lot of problems. So when we're in the present moment, that's one of the tips. And the best, easiest way to stay in the present moment is by being in one of your five senses or a multiplicity of your five senses, focusing on your, what you see, feel, taste, hear, um, uh, smell in, in the moment. And that's the basis. That's one of the primary bases of, of mindfulness-based stress reduction. You know, you may have heard of John Kabat-Zinn. He's done a lot of great work and research around mindfulness-based stress reduction as a way of reducing depression and anxiety. But the other thing I'd like to throw in, and this is more related to the first guest, and I, and I tipped, uh, I'll give you a little tip about the whole lemonade concept, is that even though there's a lot of things in life that can be hard to bear, hard to handle. There are kind of the sour, bitter parts of life. I think of it like lemonade. If you squeeze a lemon and you put it with lemon and water, it's pretty sour and bitter, especially throw in the, throw in the peel. That has even more bitterness. But if you choose to infuse and add more sweetness to that, to that lemon water, to, the, to that which is more sour, Gradually and gradually, we get it becomes sweeter and sweeter, and actually becomes something that can be a source of tremendous pleasure. So the idea of turning lemons in life into lemonade—I'm taking literally here—and that we can, we can, the more we can add sweetness. So whether it's adding more beautiful, um, joyful images like Iola has done with her Jump for Joy project, or whether it's uh, creating a, a, um, a front yard garden and and helping to do altruistic things and, and feeding and being a part of a bigger a bigger vision, that that we can co-create something that is really really beautiful and wonderful. So, on that note, we are going to go away. Um, don't go away. For, we're just going to step away for a moment. We're going to have our station break. So, we'll be right back. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, 
Food is Medicine Health Tips, Easy Allergy-Free Recipes, and Creative Culinary Inventions. The award-winning book, Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio, is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. Shh! Over here. Here's a secret for a virus-free computer. ESET. They've been a pioneer in the antivirus industry for over 25 years. 25 years of innovative, top-rated antivirus protection. ESET's award-winning security solutions provide a safe online experience for over 100 million home and business computer owners. They are so affordable, fast, and simple to use. So be gone, you blue screen of death. ESET's on my computer. If it's not on yours, visit HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on ESET now. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore or substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five sixty four sixty three. HealthyLife.net, where positive overcomes negative. Welcome back. You're listening to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. I hope you've enjoyed the show today. If you or someone you know would like to donate to or be a sponsor to this show, do um, let me know by emailing me at Teresa at TeresaNicasio.com. And, again, that's Teresa with an H. Thank you so much for joining me and my wonderful guest today. Be sure to tune in next week when uh, wonderful um, uh, Jewel Shepherd's going to be with us. She is going to talk about how celiac disease changed her life. And I still want to learn how she shifted from being a lawyer into this amazing internationally renowned blogger. So until next time, remember that every day you have the power to choose joy, that joy is a choice, like Yola was saying, uh, instead of fear, and that together we can help make this world a kinder, more joyful, and more sustainable place, one conscious act at a time. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to to, uh, chatting with you next week.